Another big commitment is in for Dan Lanning and the Ducks on day two of the early signing period, and we're breaking it all down on the Ducks Dish Podcast. And we're back like we never left. Oregon fans, what's going on? How we living? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Ducks Dish Podcast. Just in case you're new here, I'm your host, Max Torres, publisher and lead editor of Ducks Digest, covering the Oregon Ducks over on Fan Nation, part of the Sports Illustrated Network. I don't know why I was kind of running out of breath there, but man, I'm fired up. We got another big episode of the pod for you guys. It is Thursday, December 21st, the second day of the early signing period, and Oregon has landed another big commitment in the 2024 class as Fairfield, California, our Mio defensive lineman, Jericho Johnson, has committed to Dan Lanning and the Oregon Ducks. An elite defensive line haul for Tony Tuioti gets even better, and joining me, to break it all down, is Ducks Digest writer is there Israel LaRue. How we doing, Is? Thanks for being here. I mean, I'm good. Another big splash for the 2024 class, so can't be more happy than that. It is a big day indeed for Dan Lane and the Ducks as they continue to stack recruiting momentum after a big day on Wednesday, landing two All-American wide receivers in Jeremiah McClellan and Ryan Pelham, who flipped from Ohio State and USC, respectively. Dan Lane and the Ducks are pushing for the best class in program history, and adding Jericho Johnson to the fold really just helps them get that much closer to doing that and, and ultimately inking a historic class for Dan Lanning in Eugene. So Jericho Johnson announces his commitment. He chose the Ducks from competing offers from schools like USC, Utah, and Washington. I personally had viewed Washington as the biggest threat in this recruitment, but the Ducks are going to be getting another big time talent in the trenches. Jericho Johnson stands at six foot four, 300 pounds, and he comes in on the 247 Sports composite as a four star recruit, 0.9361, the number 149 player in the country, the number 22 defensive lineman, and the number 15 recruit in the state of California. We said it with Ryan Pelham, how California has been a big, big nucleus and big focus for the Ducks on the recruiting trail. But just uh, any any early thoughts here is on the newest member of Oregon's 2024 class. Yeah, I mean, this 2024 class, it really speaks to Dan Lanning's program. Uh, we don't say program here, it's program now with Lanning here. Um, I mean, they're really bolstering this D-line, and it's really needed. I mean, you looked at Oregon this past season. They had the 11th best rush defense. Um, kind of fell apart there at the end in the Pac-12 championship with just an amazing running back with Dylan Johnson. And then you have the, all these departures at the D-line with Brandon Dorless and the crew. So you're going to need big recruits to bolster that D-line and add, kind of add to it and make sure that they're kind of continuing this – big uh, time rushing defense and Jericho Johnson is pretty much as good as it gets when you're looking at defensive line talent on the west coast the ducks like we talked about are building a really good defense it was really good in 2023 but you got to try to you can't reload or you can't rebuild you got to reload you got to retool and I think Jericho Johnson is a guy that allows them to do just that We'll talk more a little bit later on about the group that he's joining up front for Tony Tuioti, but let's get into a little bit of eval here. These are the 2022 junior season highlights for Johnson. Uh, he has not posted his full senior highlights just yet, but if you're watching us on YouTube at Oregon Football Max Taurus, you can see pretty evidently right away what makes this guy special. I mean, he is obviously a giant human being like we said six foot four 300 pounds you don't find that kind of body type too often out west so when you do find it you gotta go for it and do your absolute best to land it i think you see the power in his game the power he can generate play with a low base and the way he's able to move at his height is is something that makes him very special you kind of hear it all the time in the recruiting industry but you're going for some of that size speed length 
um, power, athleticism, all those traits, I think, show up with Jericho Johnson here. I mean, the, the literally just the quickness off the line there is something that certainly impresses you if you're just taking a look at his film for the first time. But you're going to need guys that can stop the run, but also get after the passer. Obviously, he comes in pretty, pretty big, but he is an all Adidas All-American for a reason. I think you have the athletic tools there. Maybe you try to, ch try to chisel that frame up a little bit, but you don't have to watch the film for too long it is to see that this is a big-time addition for the Ducks. Yeah, Jericho, he's a disruptor. I mean, you talked about how quickly he can get off the line. He's in the backfield as soon as you blink your eyes. So, I mean, he was a terror to these high school quarterbacks and running backs. And you mentioned that you don't, you just don't want someone on the D-line that's a run stopper. You want someone that can get to the quarterback, put pressure on the quarterback, get sacks, and make it easier on that secondary. And so when you think about guys on the defensive ends and having a guy like Jericho at that D-line, I mean, Oregon's D-line can do, I mean, even better than they have this past season. I mean, you talked about it. It's not rebuilding, you're reloading, and you're definitely reloading with a guy like Jericho. This group for Dan Lanning, Tony Tuioti, and, and Tosh Lapoy along the defensive line is really, really special. Like, I'm, I'm talking number one defensive line class in the country type of special. And I'm not, you know, just saying that because I covered the Ducks. That is truly the level, the caliber of player that they are bringing in here in the 2024 class along the front line. He's going to be joining guys like Aiden Breland, a five-star out of Santa Ana, California, a modern-day high school, uh, Elijah Rushing, a five-star edge out of Tucson, Arizona, Sal Point Catholic, and then the, the list goes on, right? You have guys, Zadavian Sims out of Durant, Oklahoma, Jackson Jones out of Yuma, Arizona, hey, uh, Tion Gray out of Hazelwood Central out there in St. Louis. So there's, the list goes on of really high-caliber guys that you are pairing them with it's not so much, oh, here's one guy that we can kind of try to build our D line around. It's no, we have this guy and this guy and this guy, which really is going to help you get that solidified, bona fide, too deep along the D line. That's really what I think made Oregon so special this season is, was their ability to have depth uh, along the D line and be able to rotate in guys like Brandon Dorless and, and Jordan Birch, Popo Amavai, and then you get some of those other guys, like young guys like Mateo and, and Blake Purchase. And if you can do that, you can really wear down your opponent. So I think the 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 step that this helps Oregon take into building another really good group up front is part of what gets me excited about this commitment. Definitely. And we talked about some of the departures, such as uh, Brandon Dorless. Um, you talk about... Um, Popo, Amaove, um, Taiki, Taimani, Casey Rogers. So definitely getting this kind of defensive line class, I mean, it, it was needed because you're losing big-time guys. I mean, Casey Rogers, you talk about, he had his moments where, I mean, he was a disruptor as well, and that's what I think Oregon's really looking for, guys that are game changers. They have these intangibles where they make plays and that, yeah, they need to be, shaped and retooled to become even better college athletes, but they already have these intangible skills where they disrupt the game at a very high level. And with Jericho, it's, it's a little tough to say necessarily if he's going to be playing early because I think that's a position that's not easy to play early. The Ducks did see some guys play early along the defensive front. Like I talked about with those edge rushers, not so much on the interior, but I think that there's a possibility to certainly compete to be in that too deep uh, almost right away for Jericho coming in with guys like Aiden Breland, like I mentioned. But I want to talk about how this just shows Dan Lanning's priority, the the priority or the emphasis that he's placed on winning the line of scrimmage. He 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 said that it all starts up front for them, and they signed a lot of guys along the D-line, even in the, the 2023 class. All those guys I just mentioned, but then you also have big Terrence Green, six foot five, 265, 270 pounds. Johnny Bowens, who you flip from Texas A&M out of the Lone Star State, 6'3", 265. Um, who, who else do we have here? You got Amari Washington out of the state of Arizona, as well as Mikel Gardner. Amari Washington was 
pushing six, four near 300 pounds by the time he got to Eugene. So when we talk about retooling, excuse me, when we talk about retooling that D line, the, the cover is not bare. The cover is not bare at all. You have those guys that were kind of cooking and developing in 2023 while you had all those vets, but you're, you're hoping that you, they can take a step forward and, and show you that show you show the fans and the coaching staff what made them so coveted and why the Ducks ultimately wanted them. Yeah, and Jericho, I mean, being a NorCal kid, I mean, we talked about some of these SoCal recruits and we're talking now about this state of California as a whole being a big area for Oregon's recruiting area. And I just think that this kind of shows how, how much of a chokehold that Oregon has kind of on the West Coast as a whole, especially in California where you have all these big time guys time in, time out, they're choosing to go to Oregon. They're choosing to go to Eugene because they know they can be developed. They know they, they can make an impact, Not maybe not right away, but if they have the skills, maybe right away, but they will definitely be developed to make an impact and get to where they want to go. Oregon's certainly flexing their recruiting muscles on the West Coast with the two top defensive linemen staying out West. And, and whether you're looking at Aiden Breland and Elijah Rushing, uh, Jericho Johnson is, is certainly someone who's in that mix as well. Doesn't have quite the the star power or the the rating and ranking that the other guys do, but he's the real deal. And I think a reason that Oregon fans need to be excited about this commitment, not that they're not, but there was a point in time is where I legitimately thought it was going to be Aiden Breland or Jericho Johnson. But now you are faced with the reality of getting both of these guys. And I don't know if it's necessarily the rich get richer type of deal like it is with the Oregon running back room uh, with you know them getting um, Jay Harris from, from Northwest Missouri State. But just given the, the caliber of the talent that they already had signed at D-line, being able to add Jericho Johnson to this 2024 class is an absolute luxury. And that room is just in a really, really good spot, even though you have some pretty young guys. Yeah, and you, talk, you talked about it. It's like having your cake and eating it, too. I mean, getting those two guys. And when you think about the conference that Oregon's going into, into the Big Ten, I mean, a big factor about those schools are in the trenches. So you look at the O&D line, especially schools like Iowa, that's where they win the game. So you look at their – line so you want to get good d linemen to go up against amazing o lines that you're going to have to go against throughout your time in the big 10 and, and that's obviously a, a big part of it right is oregon is so positioned to compete in the big 10 probably i don't know if i'd say necessarily the best i think from a roster construction standpoint they are built the best to compete in the big 10 I think we obviously have to give Washington some credit because they've won the last three games against Oregon. I know a lot of Duck fans may not like hearing that, but that's the reality of the situation is Kalen DeBoer's got it going out there in Seattle, but it's no secret that Oregon has really excelled at identifying and acquiring top-end talent, whether it be through the high school ranks or the transfer portal. Dan Lanning has done a great job getting guys that ultimately play significant roles I mean, he's not getting transfers that are going to be riding the pine or only play kind of spotty, you know, here and there. He's getting guys that are going to be a big part of the puzzle, a big piece of the equation. So I think that that's something that that certainly bears mentioning. And and they were able to do some great things along the O-line as well uh, on, on uh, Wednesday, being able to to ink Shaq McCroy out of Pinson, Alabama, Clay Chalkville, hold off a late push from Deion Sanders in the buffs. I think that was big. That was one of the biggest takeaways from the signing day is that they were able to hold on to every verbal commit that they had. So it's it's just really, really good times right now for Dan Lady and the Ducks when it comes to the recruiting trail. And you mentioned the O-line and getting transfer Matthew Bet uh, Bedford too. I mean, Oregon, they're doing it both sides of the ball in the trenches and everywhere else position-wise you look at. But I think the most important part or focus for Oregon has been in those trenches just to compete with those Big Ten schools. A couple more notes here on Jericho Johnson, Oregon recruiting, and just where things are at right now for the Ducks. Maybe a little bit of a shorter episode, but wanted to get into this big news. We already knew that Tosh Lapoy was an incredibly valuable piece of this Oregon staff, 
we we already knew when he got to Oregon, like if there's one thing this guy can do, it's recruit his tail off. And he certainly bears mentioning in this recruitment because he's a Northern California guy. Uh, I said it uh, when we talked about Jeremiah McClellan and Dan Lanning, how those guys from your home state, your home area, maybe just mean a little bit more. But with with Tosh Lapoy, he continues to acquire elite talent. And then in 2023, he he really put it together, I think. He, I think, put maybe some of those Duck fans that were possibly doubting him I mean, I saw after the last season, you know, some people were even calling for Tosh Lapoy's job. And when I saw that, I was like, you guys don't understand how valuable he is to this program if, if you're saying things like that. And Oregon took a huge leap forward in 2023 as a defense. So I just wanted to give take a second to give Tosh Lapoy a, a big shout out. Um, and then you also have to talk about Tony Tuioti. I don't think he gets enough credit for what he does as a recruit. I mean, bringing over Casey Rogers and Jordan Riley from his time in Nebraska, those guys were great. Uh, I think Casey Rogers had the bigger impact, but then continuing the development of guys like Brandon Dorless and, and then working with, with Jordan Birch as well uh, along that defensive front. I think that just the, the staff is cooking right now and, and they are in a phenomenal spot. Yeah, definitely a big day two performance. I like to say from the coaching staff, um, Excited to see what happens day three. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, any any final remarks here is as we kind of wind this one down and anything else you want to talk about with Jericho or just Oregon recruiting, Oregon, whatever it is. Yeah, I mean, uh, as of we're speaking, um, Oregon, they've put up one of the best, probably the best recruiting classes in its history, and it just speaks volumes to what Lanning has done in such a short period of time here in Eugene and um, it just shows where Oregon can be recruiting wise and how that's going to reflect on the field. Because if you talk about the top recruiting schools, usually those are the schools that are competing for a national championship. And I know Oregon was just short of it this year, but you get those recruits transfers, you get those guys that can play and you develop them. I mean, you're building something that can last for a while and not only com- to compete, but to compete for national championships. It really feels like Oregon has that that healthy balance between the high school ranks and the transfer portal. Uh, now that the the signing period is kind of nearing its end um, of that three day window, we're going to see probably Oregon focus a bit more on the transfer portal. But I think that they're really well positioned for their first year in the Big Ten. And just to kind of give my final remarks. I mean, it's just it's been wild to to cover this twenty twenty four recruiting cycle. This is my second cycle, uh, second full cycle, I should say, under under Dan Lanning with the 2023 class being the first, and it it, it just keeps getting better. His he talked uh, he talked on day one of the signing day about signing period about being able to point to what he's done while at Oregon with a guy like a Troy Franklin or or a Bo Nix, and I think that that's only going to continue on on the defensive side of the ball, and I, I bet that that played into the into the puzzle here with, with, with Jericho Johnson. So ducks are cooking. Jericho Johnson is a duck, but uh, before we get out of here is where can people find more of you and the work you got going on in this space? Yeah. Find me on Twitter at Israel underscore LaRue. And I have all my tweets and articles up there about Oregon football. Right on. Well, if you guys want to find more of me, you can follow me on Twitter at M sports, as well as Instagram at M sports, subscribe to my YouTube channel at Oregon football, Max Taurus, and read all of my written work covering Oregon football and Oregon football recruiting over on ducksdigest.com. But that would do it for us today. Appreciate you guys taking some time out of your day to talk some ball, talk some duck football recruiting with me, and we will catch you guys in the next episode of the ducks dish podcast.